Let's try to do some limits at infinity for square root function. Now these, I think, are the most complicated questions which you come to when taking limits. Square root functions are very tricky. Okay, now let's start with the first one. Both are actually similar in the sense that limits are at different points, but the functions are same. In the first case, we are saying when x approaches infinity. In the second case, we are checking for x approaching minus infinity, okay? Uh, so we'll start with a first, when x approaches positive infinity, and let's see what happens to the function. So whenever you have a square root function, well, if you look at it, it seems as if this value will always be growing as infinity, but we have a minus x here. So that will be pulling it down, correct? And therefore, there's a possibility that the function may not uh, arbitrarily increase to infinity, right? It may uh, give you a limit. Now, so let's try to do it. And the best approach for a square root function, as we discussed in how to find limits, is to rationalize, okay? So you normally don't see something like this and think about rationalization, right? Because kind of fraction part is missing, right? But assume there's one underneath, okay? So everything over one, right? Now to rationalize, what should you do? To rationalize, we got to multiply and divide by its conjugate, right? So let me, what is the conjugate of this? So let me do it here itself. And then from there, we'll move forward. Or let's, let's write it, okay? So the limit, x approaches infinity. And then we have this function here, which says x squared plus x minus, well, this is within square root, minus x, right? So when you rationalize it, you have to multiply and divide by its conjugate. So its conjugate is square root of x squared plus x, and here it becomes plus x, correct? And then same thing in the denominator, correct? So that's it. Now, this is equal to this. And then we know when you multiply this kind of thing, think like this is over 1, okay? So we say limit x approaches infinity, and this will be like a squared minus b squared, right? So when you do that, what you get is a squared is x squared plus x. This is a squared minus b squared minus x squared, correct? That's what you get in numerator, and denominator is 1 times this. So you get square root of x squared plus 1 plus x, correct? So that is what you get in the denominator. Now, we will further simplify it. x squared minus x squared is 0. So in the numerator, we land with just x, right? And in the denominator, how should we now do this part? So what we do here is we can take x squared comma, right? So if we do that, we have here x squared, and then if we take common, we are left with 1 here, plus 1 over x squared, correct? That's what we get under the square root, right? Plus x, correct? Now, the idea is to take it out and then get this cancelled, right? So that's what we're trying to do now. And we say this is equals to limit x approaches infinity. And here we get, I will remind you to look into my video on square root of a square, right? What is square root of x square? Square root of x square is absolute x. Okay, it is not just x. It's absolute x. Now, so that is, that is what most important thing is. So if that point is not clear to you, you look into my video of uh, square root of a square, okay? Now, in this case, because we are approaching positive side, so absolute value of uh, this will be positive itself. That's how the absolute x is defined. And therefore, we get x outside, right? And within square root, we have 1 plus 1 over x square plus x, correct? Now, let me move forward and let me just take it on this side. I know I have to do this problem, but I'll solve it in a different fashion. So I'm using that space um, to show it. So we'll take it here and this is equal to. Now here, I can take x common. Do you see that? So we get here limit x approaches infinity and we have numerator x and in the denominator I'm taking x common, right? 
So let me put it like this. We are left with square root of 1 plus 1 over x square and here plus 1. Is it okay? So that's what we get in the denominator plus 1. And now if I put x approaching infinity, now I can cancel out. You know, we have x and x in the numerator and denominator, so I can cancel these out, correct? And now I can simplify this and write this as equal to limit of x approaches infinity and this is like 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over x square plus 1, correct? So, so that's what you get here because you've already taken factored out uh, the x part, correct? Now, here I can now put infinity for x, right? If 1 over x squared, so 1 over a very large number will yield me 0, right? So therefore I get here 1 over square root of 1 plus 0, right? Plus 1, correct? Which is equals to, because 1 over large, large number is 0, correct? Which will equal 1 square root is 1, so I get 1 over 2. So I get here 1 over 2, and therefore the limit of this function is half when x approaches infinity, correct? So we successfully did this part, and but I think what you need to remember here is that where we used x square square root, correct, this part. So what I would like you to check here is that, so we have to do square root of x square is basically equals to absolute x, right? Now, since we said that x approaches positive infinity, we said absolute x is equals to plus x, correct? If this was minus infinity, we will use minus x here, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. So, you can check my video on that part, correct? Now, I hope you understand the strategy which we adopted here, correct? And got our answer as how. Now, the second part of this question is very interesting. When this was approaching positive infinity, we got this answer. But how about when this function is approaching negative infinity? Do we get this or similar to it? Well, let's look into it. If you plug in a negative 1000, let us say 10,000 value. So in such cases, first thing is, whenever you get these kinds of functions, you can test what is the expected result. Table of values, you remember table of values? I told you in how to find limits, table of values is the most important strategy, most important. So in these cases, if you have a doubt, just take out your calculator, plug in the values. For example, if you plug in 1000 here, right, which is plus 1000, because we are approaching uh, infinity positive side, you will get an answer which will be close to half, 0.5. Now if you plug in 1000 here, you will get a very large value. You don't really get something small. So this function actually increases and increases and increases. Why is it so? Because that minus large number makes this quantity positive. Do you see that? So this becomes positive effectively. And square of a negative number is also positive. And this is more positive than this, correct? So this will be negative when I put in minus 1000. This will be only minus 1000. And how about that? So that will have six zeros, right? So this will become thousand, thousand, right? Million. So when you take away anything from million, I mean thousand from million, you still have a very large positive quantity. So you will end up with two positive quantities which both are large, right? So this actually does not exist because, so here the answer is it does not exist because as X approaches a large amount, this approaches infinity, right? Actually, whenever you're approaching minus also, because this minus makes it positive, right? And this itself is positive. Square will be positive. So this approaches positive infinity, right? So this also approaches positive infinity. So it does not exist. Okay? So this is a very important conclusion. And this question is asked in communication many times. Okay? So take care of that. And if you have this kind of a thing, here it is, the solution. But the best part is, how can you check your answer? So... Check your answer by doing what? So I will recommend table of values, right? So I'll say table of values to check 
your answer, right? For all times. So what you should do when I say table of values for your answer, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you is just go like values you can test example thousand, right? So approach thousand, you understand? For positive values, approach thousand. And for negative values like this, you can say you can approach negative thousand. Okay. Or maybe ten thousand if you feel like it. It doesn't matter. And then you will see how the what function value approaches, right? And that will help you to get the right answer. Thank you.